Tunnel of construction and a series of redevelopment projects give the appearance of an economic upswing in Riverside, California. But below the surface, a darker reality is blanketing the area east of Los Angeles. Look at the freeway. That's right, man. Panhandling and homeless encampments are scattered around the landscape of the Riverside area. Like most cities in America, the housing collapse caused great financial suffering here. The problem is that all indications show the situation is actually getting worse. It is getting tougher and tougher. In my own family, I have uh, two son-in-laws that are out of work. Despite her own family struggles, Linda Whitlock shows up near a homeless encampment to hand out sack lunches every week. She's been doing this for seven years, providing a lifeline. I'd have to go back to dumpster diving and getting food from behind grocery stores. But it's not just the homeless asking for a handout. Some of the people standing in line do have a home, but were embarrassed to be shown on camera. California ranks 16th in the nation when it comes to food hardship. And Riverside ranked number two among all U.S. metro areas. At the Riverside County Food Bank, requests for food have risen 25% in the past three years. While we are able to help maybe as much as 300 to 350,000 people per month, there's almost 750,000 people who are living at or below the poverty crisis line in the two county regions. So we still have a long ways to go. In the bedroom communities east of Los Angeles, hunger isn't the only issue. There are tons of foreclosed homes, just like this one, which have been warded up and are now sitting empty. According to Realty Track, an online foreclosure marketplace, there is a foreclosure filing for every 49 homes, one of the highest rates in America. That's part of the reason that Riverside has earned the dubious distinction of being on top of Forbes' list of cities where the economy is still getting worse. The head of the, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, made it very clear in his press conference that uh, he is not going to uh, uh, defend the dollar. He, he apparently believes that uh, if the dollar falls, it won't fall by very much and that it will not be bad enough to interfere with uh, the growth of the American economy. Not everyone uh, shares his opinion. Uh, immediately, uh, there was a reaction in uh, the commodities markets. Silver, for example, went up uh, rapidly in price. Uh, Mr. Bernanke uh, uh, tried to claim that it was the responsibility of the Secretary of the Treasury uh, to maintain uh, the dollar, when in fact uh, his policies, uh, monetary policies, have an impact on the value of the dollar. So that was a a very un, un, unfair and wrong uh, suggestion uh, that he has no responsibility. Uh, the the only fair way to look at this is that in spite of the claims by Mr. Bernanke and the Secretary of the Treasury that they believe in a strong dollar, they do not. And the marketplace recognized that immediately. And if this continues, uh, at some point they will definitely have to uh, change their policies. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is April 28th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Uh, this is a poll. The poll is closed, but the results are 91% of voters saying uh, that uh, gasoline will exceed the $5 mark this year, and uh, followed by 10% saying maybe. You can go down here and uh, put in your email address, and it gives a good idea of... Uh, who's visiting my website, uh, but if you want to follow me on eBlogger, you can just hit that little follow button down there. If you have a Facebook account, you go all the way down here, and uh, you'll get notified when I post videos to Facebook. Other than that, my uh, YouTube channel is ddarko2012. You can check that out. All right, so we'll start off uh, like I usually do with the economy. 
Dow transports hit record, leading Wall Street higher. The Dow Jones transports closed at an all-time high on Thursday, leading stocks higher and signaling more gains due to its role as a touchstone of economic demand. And then we have U.S. stocks rally after a slew of earnings. U.S. stocks rallied overnight as a slew of positive earnings reports offset mixed economic data. And uh, we're going to move on here to China. China stocks closed lower Wednesday, falling for fourth consecutive trading day. And then to the dollar, the dollar index falls three-year low. Dollar fell to a three-year low against major currencies on Thursday on the Federal Reserve's intention to keep interest rates near zero. It says, while softer than expected, U.S. jobs and growth data underscore the bearish sentiment. And then we have dollar loses more ground. Uh, to a three-year low, then uh, yuan sets a record high of six dollars and fifty cents against U.S. dollar or dollars. And then we have China should lead over Asian single currency. China should take the lead in formulating a single currency for Asia, given the large size of its economy. Suggesting、uh, Lim Sieng Chai, Malaysia's deputy minister of Finance, and then we have the experts. The experts call for relaxation of RMB capital account convertibility. It says here from Xinhua, China, the world's second largest economy, should ease restrictions on the RMB、uh, capital account convertibility to facilitate foreign direct investment. Chinese experts said on Thursday. They want to open it up to the world. Their, their currency. It says here, China to float 30 billion yuan in book entry T bonds at the yield of. 4.15 percent, and、um, goes on here. It says the bonds will be sold to the public from April 28th to May 3rd and become tradable on security markets on May 5th. Said the statement. Said the interest of the bonds will be paid on a half-year basis. The issuance marks the ministry's 10th batch of book entry Treasury bonds this year. Japan, Japan enters recession, but no yen printing yet. And、uh, this is the thing. I know that they did、uh, actually. Call on a like a, a tr- some trillion dollar、uh, basically stimulus package right off the bat, and then they said again that they were going to do it again. So they they will be printing money that is in the works. And、um, says here for the treasury, treasury、uh, prices climb. Downbeat economic data sent investors towards safe harbor treasuries, lifting prices already nudged upward by the Fed's trimmed economic forecast. And then we have commodities. So there we go with our chart. And、uh, last time I think I reported they were going down, and now they're going right back up.、Uh, Brent crude futures are at one hundred and twenty-four dollars and seventy-nine cents a barrel. Sorry. And then we have heating oil futures、uh, were down、uh, four cents. Natural gas up sixteen cents. And then、uh, moving down to cocoa and coffee. Cocoa's、uh, up fifty-four at one hundred twelve dollars. Coffee up two dollars and eighty cents. Corn down thirty dollars and cotton down a dollar thirty-seven. Wheat、uh, down thirty-four and forty-three、uh, dollars. And then soybeans down thirty-four dollars.、Uh, moving on to、uh, precious metals, we have some、uh, big news here. Copper up two dollars and fifteen cents. And copper has been strong lately, along with silver and gold.、Uh, silver is hitting records here, forty-eight dollars and thirty-three cents, almost hitting the fifty-dollar mark. Up two dollars and thirty-four cents. Gold,、uh, gold is now at one thousand five hundred and thirty-five. Dollars, almost thirty-six dollars per ounce. It was up eighteen dollars. So man, commodities, especially precious metals, are answering、uh, the dollar. And it says here, crude hits thirty-month highs. Dollar weakens. U.S. crude oil futures rose on Thursday to a thirty-one-month high after volatile trading session、uh, that saw a weak dollar attract investors seeking alternative assets. And then we move on to this: the 94 cent difference in gas prices as stations across the street from each other in nation's capital. And look at that, 4.99. I mean, <laughs> you might want to make it a little less obvious than that, because when people see 4.99, that's basically five dollars. They start freaking, and that's what I think will happen. <laughs> But I, you know, the thing is, is that、uh, these oil companies and that, and these investors. They have statistics. They do research, and they know what the threshold is for consumers as far as how much they'll be willing to pay, and、um, you know, basically before they start riding at the pumps. So、uh, I would imagine that it's going to be about six fifty, seven dollars. Who knows? Maybe it'll be ten dollars. It depends on uh, on uh, the situation and how the slaves are, are are reacting, right? So you can't really You can't always interpret what the slaves are going to do. So, but people need gas in order to、uh, to get to their、uh, to get.
to get to their little uh, jobs, right? So it says here, gold and silver futures extended their unprecedented rally with both metals finishing at record highs after data showed U.S. economic growth slowed while prices for gasoline and food rose. Then panic selling of the U.S. dollar now underway as debt system implodes. Silver hits record near $50 for first time since 1980. Then U.S. consumer confidence falls on higher gas prices. And then we have next German consumer confidence to drop. And then interview world's poor face grim realities amid global food price surge, says World Bank. And then we have food inflation threatens millions in Asia. Soaring food and fuel prices can push tens of millions of Asians into extreme poverty by 2011 and derail economic growth in the region, the Asian Development Bank said. Then we have higher costs hit soap makers and will hit shoppers. Makers of soap, diapers, and other household products are spending much more for fuel and raw materials than expected, which means more price increases are on the way for consumers. So in other words, they're going to maintain their profit margin, but they're just going to pass on the higher costs of, you know, because of inflation and printing money on to you. So, and that's why uh, you have some uh, uh, oil companies like, uh, or gasoline companies and that uh, still profiting right now, right? It says here, Walmart sees shoppers pain. Retailer wants to widen the gap of savings amid higher prices of food and fuel. And uh, they want to get U.S. sales back on track. They said customers are increasingly finding it hard to spend. Then we have Pepsi. Pepsi plans additional price increases. And that's due to what? Inflation. And then we have, will China's rise lead to the decline of the U.S.? And uh, IMF talking about making a bold prediction that China will exceed the U.S. and become the world's largest economy as early as 2016. Why? Because they kind of want it that way, so maybe they'll get it. It says IMF bombshell, age of America nears end. And then we have the future of the liberal world order, internationalism after America. So you can uh, check this out. This is from the CFR. And then, of course, they know what's going on. They know exactly what's going on because they plan it. They are the planners of this. Everything that happens does not happen uh, by mere coincidence. It says here economic growth slows as inflation measures spikes up and then we have quick news. U.S. economic growth slows to a sluggish 1.8 percent and then states the states face a 1.6 trillion shortfall in funds to pay retirees benefits. And then we have Americans rating retirement funds early. Nearly one-fifth of full-time employed Americans have rated retirement accounts in the past year to cover emergencies according to a national bank rate survey. Then we have Mr. Bernanke, Helicopter Ben, uh, begins public dialogue with a pledge to maintain record stimulus. Then Fed says stimulus plan will end in June. Then more people applied for unemployment benefits and initial jobless claims in the U.S. increased to three-month high. Americans, Americans depend more on federal aid than ever. And then going on to California, California voters favor taxing the rich to fend off school cuts. So you got to make sure that uh, indoctrination and brainwashing, uh, you know, takes place and keeps going. You got to make sure that you that you have a good fresh crop of slaves ready to work diligently for the man. And in order to do that, you got to make sure that you keep the re-education up and running. So do what you got to do if it means taxing the rich. Mm, are they going to tax the people that uh, are really for all this indoctrination and, and brainwashing? No, they're not, they're not the social engineers, the millionaires, the guys that, like my, uh, my landlord that owns the apartment. You know, yeah, he may be a millionaire, but, you know, uh, I don't think that he should be paying for, uh, for schools, right? So... But that's who it'll hit. It'll hit uh, just your guy down the block that's maybe having a, a million dollars uh, net income. But they're not gonna uh, they're not gonna ask the uh, the multi billionaires or the trillionaires to do it. And uh, moving on here, we have pending sales of existing homes in U.S. increased 5.1 percent, more than estimated. And then some alarming facts you must read before you even think of buying a home. And uh, I'll go off to this first one, and then we'll continue in part two of this video series. During the first three months of this year, fewer new homes were sold in the U.S. than in any three-month period ever. So you can uh, join me in part two of this news bulletin. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.